Hello, everyone. My name is Biji Matthew. I am a research associate professor at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to present in your conference. Um, special thanks to Dr. Torres and Dr. Uh, Selika for uh, inv sending me the invite and including me in this um, conference presentation. I'm going to share my um, slides with you. Okay, I haven't done this before, so this is my first time. Um, the title of my talk is Extracellular Vesicles uh, as Novel Cell-Free Therapeutics in Retinal Neurodegenerative Diseases. Uh, I will be talking about a little bit of background and overview, our transition from stem cells to extracellular vesicles, isolation and characterization of these particles, their neuroprotective effect in retinal ischemia. Then I will also touch base, touch up with the functionally engineered EVs that we have generated and the ongoing work and the summary and the conclusion. The prevalence of eye diseases in uh, US and worldwide is very alarming. Age-related macular degeneration and diabetic retinopathy are the two major leading causes of irreversible blindness. Glaucoma is the second most leading cause of blindness. Considering the aging of the world's population, these numbers are expected to reach 200 million by the year 2050. This gives us the signal that this is a very important problem and it needs to be taken care of or we need to do something. Whether it is AMD, diabetic retinopathy, or glaucoma, it all leads to a condition in the eye, in the retina, called, called retinal ischemia. And retinal ischemia develop oxidative stress, leading to neuronal cell apoptosis, neuronal cell death, and neuroinflammation. And all these uh, things together causes death and damage of irreversible, most of the time, neuronal loss and ax neuronal and axonal loss. In my studies, we are more focusing on retinal ganglion cells, how we can protect or regenerate these neurons, how we can, uh, or can we even control the inflammation and prevent the RGC and axonal loss. Um, this is a pretty uh, standard image of the histology of retina. Retina is a very well architectured tissue with different cell layers are very, very well organized. And this is the um, heterogeneous population of different cell types that is present in the retina. In a normal eye, as I mentioned earlier, it looks very organized and the layer thickness is pretty standard. But when uh, disease happens or in case of ischemia, the cells uh, due to inflammation and infiltration of different immune cells, the, um, the, there is displacement of the cells in the, in the layers, which leading to ret retinal thinning. So retinal thinning is one, one of the ma main uh, characteristic um, which leads later into the diseases. So the current treatment options, as we all are aware of, uh, using intraocular injections of um, anti-VEGF or other agents just to uh, prevent further damage or to take care of the symptoms or using eye drops or in case of glaucoma, surgery. This um, treatment has limitations, as we are aware of. It has side effects. They are very expensive and they can only treat the consequences, not the cause or the pathology. So it is very important is to develop neuroprotection, stimulate axonal growth, and regenerate RGCs and axons. Towards this goal, uh, our lab started working with the bone marrow-derived mesenchymal stem cells as uh, therapeutic strategies to prevent retinal ischemia-induced uh, damage. So here, this is a um, this is an ima uh, figure image from our uh, earlier published paper, where what we have done is we uh, fluorescently labeled 
bone marrow stem cell uh, stem cells and injected them intra intravitreally into the uh, eyes of rats uh, normal and ischemic eye so as you can see here over the course of uh, 3 weeks the cells very well um, survived and they were incorporated into the retina and this is confirmed here by using retinal flat mount imaging um, and if, there is very interestingly uh, we found that when ischemia uh, the eye ischemic eye has more penetration of stem cells uh, into the retina even though stem cells are very promising there are some problems associated with them there are side effects like limited integration of the cells into the retina in, into the tissue here in this case retina and there can be aberrant growth um, a transformation into tumor um, there can be immune reaction and uh, surgical compl complications by introducing these stem cells into the retina So um, from, from here, um, researchers uh, all over the world were trying to figure out how can we mitigate these side effects of the stem cells. And one of the ways people found that um, the stem cell effects are paracrine. It is mediated by factors released into the extracellular space. So we have already published two papers uh, where we generated conditioned media from these stem cells. So two methods we used, uh, one is normoxic condition media where cells grow into normal conditions and then we also subjected the cells to hypoxia and then we generated hypoxic condition media. Both these uh, condition media when injected into the vitreous um, in an ischemic uh, uh, in vivo model, we found that they were equally protective and also when it is hypoxic conditioned, the protective effect is more enhanced. So this led to the discovery uh, from us and others that uh, certain uh, factors which is released into the, um, in the, in the extracellular space are basically driving the protective effect of these, um, con these stem cells. And those uh, of that, there are naturally there are factors, tropic factors like proteins and other, uh, other, other factors, but one um, important observation is um, the nanoparticle, like uh, nanoparticles secreted into, into the, in, into the uh, uh, extracellular space. And they are called, uh, called extracellular vesicles or exosomes based on their size. Extracellular vesicles or exosomes are um, tiny, as I mentioned, the nanoparticles secreted into the extracellular space. Um, their size is 40 to 150 nano, nanometer. Um, if it is 100 and above 2000, then it is microparticles. Uh, they are involved in intracellular communications and also transfer of materials between the cells. Why they are important? Because they contain uh, lipids, proteins, genetic material like RNA and even miRNA. Um, and the most important fact here is they are of the same origin of their parental cell and they can be engineered or modified to fit our needs. As I mentioned earlier, exosomes can deliver cargo materials to target cells. So this, this slide here explains the biogenesis of exosome formation. They are uh, for, uh, they, they're formed as imaginations of the membrane and then they gather up the um, uh, the, the, uh, gather up the content uh, like the genetic materials or the proteins uh, forming an early endosome. Then these endosomes fuse together forming multivesicular body and they release their contents to outside to the extracellular space by a process called exocytosis. So now the advantages of uh, these EVs over the stem cells as I mentioned earlier, they take on the properties of their cells of origin. They're, they're readily entering into the cells they don't have any immune reaction, they can be cross administered, easily stored, the contents can be tailored, surface can be altered, and they act as very good small molecule carriers, which makes them perfect for precision medicine. So our first uh, goal in the process was to uh, successfully isolate EVs. 
So the golden standard of traditional method is ultracentrifugation, as we all, uh, all are aware of. Um, but we found that this is a little bit laborious process, time consuming, and the yield was not very, um, it, it was very, very low. So we adopted another method where we have combined um, centrifugation, filtration, and uh, precipitation. And the yield was really good. We, we, we were able to see a really big pellet of EVs uh, at the bottom of the centrifuge tube at the end of the process. And then we characterized this, it by using uh, three, four different methods uh, confirmed they are exosomes. The one, one of them was uh, size characterization. Uh, we used nanocyte. A nanocyte tells us um, what is the particle size and the number size and the number. Uh, we found that uh, the, here is a comparison of our method and the ultracentrifugation method. Here, you can see that the particles that we isolated uh, was uh, small particles and they fall in the range of exosomes, which is 100 to 150 nanometer. And our modal size was um, 92.8, uh, which was very, very, very good. Uh, when we compare it to the ultracentrifugation, the size is 131 was the moral size, but again, you will see much larger particles compared to our, uh, our population of uh, EVs. Then we did a, an EM uh, imaging where you can see the cup-shaped structure of the um, extracellular vesicles. Uh, we also used gold nanoparticle labeling for the surface markers. Uh, to further confirm. And our western blotting for the markers of EVs, um, pretty much CD63 and CD9, uh, which again helped us to uh, believe that the particles that we have isolated are EVs, uh, exosomes. So then we went ahead and uh, evaluated the neuroprotective effect of these MSC-derived EVs in retina. So we used um, two different methods. One is our in vitro model, and then we have an in vivo model. The in vitro model, um, our studies were done in uh, retinal uh, neuronal cell line, R28, which is a, a mixed population of different types of retinal cells, as we see in the retina, has all these um, mixed population. Um, so here, uh, the model is oxygen glucose deprivation. Uh, what we do is like we use um, no glucose media and then uh, put them in hypoxic condition where the oxygen content is 1%, which uh, mimic the in, in vivo retinal ischemia. Um, so in this model, after we subject the cells to OGD, 24 hours, we will change the media to normal, normal media and then add the EVs and uh, it's kind of post-treatment, and then uh, reoxygenate for 18 hours. And at the end of the experiment, we'll measure the endpoints like cell proliferation, cell death, and also we'll look for uh, inflammatory markers and apoptosis. Um, here, uh, this is um, this uh, this this is cell death data uh, at varying concentration uh, of varying number of EVs. There is a decrease in uh, cell death with the administration of EVs after OGD. Similarly, we did a flow cytometry uh, analysis of cellular proliferation, and we found that um, e with EV um, extracellular vesicle treatment, the proliferation increased even after uh, OGD treatment. Here is our in vivo model. Uh, we use a Vista rats. Um, so the study is, uh, this is a schema of our study. So we subject the rat at baseline uh, to, uh, at baseline, do the ERG, and then uh, on day one, we subject the eyes to ischemia by raising the intraocular pressure to 130 mercury, and then 24 hour post ischemia, administer uh, EVs intravitreally, and then uh, depending on what we are measuring, um, we will collect the retina if we have to evaluate apoptosis and other inflammatory markers. Uh, otherwise, we will let the rat for one, one week and we look at the ERGs and then collect the retina for histology and immunohistochemistry. So here is the uh, functional outcome from, um, from the ERG studies. Um, so the, there are three conditions here. We have the eyes 
uh, which is injected with the PBS, ischemic eye injected with the PBS, and uh, uh, another con control was the uh, EV depleted condition media, and, and then the EV is treated. So here clearly you can see that the, uh, there, is a, there is almost 60% recovery from the ischemic eye. This is ischemia versus treated. Uh, and the B waves, which also tells us the health of the um, retinal neurons, um, that also is significantly improved. We all we analyzed uh, apoptosis in this in this model. Um, so here you can see that apoptosis uh, is apoptosis increased with ischemia, but when uh, we administered EVs the number of um, tunnel positive cells were decreased. Um, here we counted these uh, apoptotic positive cells. Um, this is the ischemic eye control versus ischemia. There is a um, significant increase, but which is attenuated when we treated the eyes with the uh, EVs, and which was, um, which was the case uh, across um, all the different layers. This is uh, the, uh, here we, we we again evaluated uh, inflammatory mediators like IL six, TNF alpha, and cleaved caspase, another marker for apoptosis. And as you can see uh, in the Western blot, and this is the quantification of the Western blot, we found that uh, inflammatory markers are um, significantly reduced, and the cleaved caspase uh, also significantly reduced in ischemic eyes treated with the exosomes. So now, uh, after we found that it is very protective, we wanted to understand once we inject these EVs, which was a single injection, what happens to, the, to these uh, EVs or to understand the fate of these injected EVs over the course of time. So we followed this for one month. So here um, we can fluorescently label, label these particles. So we use a green, green fluorescent labeling agent um, to label the particles. And then we injected intra, intravitreally into the eyes of the rat and followed for like four weeks. And as you can see, this is a control eye, nothing injected. And this, this is day one control versus ischemia. And uh, day one, you see a lot of uh, green fluorescently labeled EVs sitting uh, bound to the vitreous. And then as it progresses, day three, uh, there is more moving towards the retina. And day seven, you can see it is located near the retina or in the retina. And then even at four weeks, we still see um, fluorescent labeling, labeled EVs in the vitreous. So this led us to the question whether these EVs are binding to the vitreous and just sitting there. Is, is the, the vitreous acting as a depot for collecting all these EVs and just storing there? Or is it slowly releasing so that the retina can get it uh, in, as a, in a so, slow release process? So for, to understand that process, we isolated vit, vitreous from the eye, in normal eye. And vitreous is nothing but collagen. And we know that EVs bind to collagen via integrins. So we did a binding study where we coated the plate with the um, uh, uh, vitreous isolated from the rat. And our studies show that um, sim uh, the EVs, when uh, EVs are time dependent and uh, dose dependently and time dependently saturated uh, binding to the vitreous. Then um, to better understand how EVs traverse uh, into the retina, we this, is, this is an image which is a confocal representation of a whole thickness retinal flat mount, 3D. So here you can see that it is uh, day one, it is injected and it is uh, right there sitting bound to the vitreous. And then as the, as the time progress, over the course of time, three, three days, it traverses down to the to the to the retina we also confirmed this by doing retinal cryo sections where these are green fluorescent labeled evs and then we stain the retinal ganglion cell layer with the beta tubulin 3 and you can see that the evs are um, moving towards or they are all already there 
in 24 hours post administration they are in the retinal ganglion cell, cell layer so they are they are moving and uh, penetrating uh, through the blood uh, blood retinal barrier and to reach the retina and especially to the ganglion cell layer we also um, confirmed that um, the evs once injected they can reach up to the optic nerve this is an image of an optic nerve head day one the evs are injected still sitting in the vitreous and then by day seven we can see some of the evs penetrating into the retina and reaching up to uh, through the axons into the optic nerve head which is very promising this 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 is a uh, flat mounted retina retinal section and here uh, we used multiple uh, marker cell marker stains to see which cell types are specifically taking it up. So this IBA1 is a marker for ret uh, retinal microglia, and you can see that a lot of uh, EVs are co-localized with the re red color, uh, red I IBA1, uh, which means microglia is taking up a lot of EVs. Um, within 48 hours of administration. And similarly, astrocytes, Vimentin stains for astrocytes, and astrocytes are also uh, endocytosizing uh, all these EVs once we inject it. Our um, interest was more in seeing whether they are taken up by the retinal ganglion cells. Are they reaching? So here, this is 48 hours post injection. You can see that when we co labeled with the bet 2 billion 3 and uh, BRN3A. BRN3A is a very specific marker for RGCs. So is beta 2 billion 3. And you can see that um, they, they are in ischemic and non ischemic eye. Uh, they co localize very well with these um, BRN3 positive and beta 2 billion 3 positive cells, which confirms they are taken up by RGCs. And this is a better image, an enlarged version of the same. Uh, same slide that I have shown you, non-ischemic eye and ischemic eye. Somehow we notice that ischemic eyes take, when the eyes are subjected to ischemia, the blood retinal barrier permeability um, or so something happens which we don't know, but um, more EVs are penetrating to the retina when the uh, eyes are subjected to ischemia. So the take home summary from here is, in vitro and in vivo neuroprotection is, um, is guaranteed by uh, administration of EVs. Um, they attenuate neuroinflammation and apoptosis. They penetrate blood retinal barrier to retina and optic nerve. It remains in the vitreous for four weeks, binding to the collagenous vitreous via binded integrins, and they are localized in RGCs, microglia, and other cell types. And these findings are published in uh, biomaterials paper. Now our next goal is the generation of functionally engineered EVs. Um, whether we can modify these EVs with what we think is more, um, more to enhance the protective effect. So as I mentioned earlier, we found that when the cells are subjected to hypoxia, there is enhanced neuroprotection compared to normoxic um, EVs, normoxic conditioned media. So we isolated uh, EVs from hypoxia conditioned uh, stem cell media and evaluated it uh, or compared its effects to the normal EVs. Um, here you can see that the cell proliferation compared to the normoxic, it increased significantly. And similarly, this is uh, a mistake here, but actually it is cell death, cell death decreased. Cell death decreased, decreased and cell proliferation increased compared with the normoxic EVs for the hypoxic. And now uh, our question is, if the hypoxia is enhancing this protective effect, what is different in hypoxic EVs that is not there in normoxic EVs? or what exactly is driving this functionality. As we know that the EVs contain the uh, part of the cell, like it contains the proteins, lipid, MIRs, DNA, RNA, and other things. Studies are more pointing towards MIR, microRNAs are the uh, functional entities that is driving the uh, functionality of these particles. 
So to confirm that my microRNAs are involved in, in this functional aspect, we did a silencing or um, we deleted or we blocked Dicer and Ago2, two particular specific genes which are involved in the biogenesis of MIR precursor uh, generation. Uh, using siRNA silencing um, in cells like uh, mesenchymal stem cells, we deleted these two genes. And then uh, the EVs produced from these particular cells did not have any Dicer or Ago2. And that means they don't have any microRNA population. So when we use these EVs in our OGD model and measured LDH uh, cell death, we found that in, when we used normal uh, conditioned or, or normoxic EVs and the hypoxic EVs, as I have shown before, the effect was pretty clear. They attenuated. And, but when we used the Dicer and Ago knockout uh, EVs, the effect was, um, there was no effect. The cells were dying. So this confirms and my microRNAs are responsible for the functional aspect of the EVs, or they are very important. So with that in mind, we wanted to understand which are the MIRs, miRNAs, which is um, differentially expressed in hypoxic EVs compared to normoxic EVs. So we did a RNA sequence study, uh, and here this is a heat map showing the differential expression pattern of the different MIRs. And this is the same thing, which is represented as, as bar graph. So uh, using uh, a, an, a program called MIR Walk, we identified MIR targets and pathways. And based on the targets, um, which is relevant to um, retinal diseases, like um, pathways for HIF-1 alpha, P53, TNF alpha. So we, um, based on these uh, pathways, which are relevant to the to our model or our disease conditions, we um, sorted out the MIRs. And MIR424 was one of the uh, microRNAs which is highly expressed uh, or differentially expressed between the normoxic and the hypoxic EVs. So once we had this D, uh, lead um, with the MIR424, we wanted to see by overexpressing these particular MIRs in the EV, in, the, in, in our normoxic EV population, how that can uh, enhance the neuroprotective effect. So um, by, using, by using a lentiviral system, uh, we transfected these MIRNAs to the, uh, the 424, MIR424 into um, mesenchymal stem cells. And then, um, the, as we know, once we transfect and the cells are uh, transfected with MIR424, the EVs produced from those cells will contain the same microRNAs because the EVs are coming from the cells of their origin. Uh, and then we, after once we isolated those EVs, we compared them with the, uh, compared the, to side by side the MIR424 EVs versus the EVs uh, from the normal cells. And we found that they're, pretty, they're same with the respect to their size, the number of production and markers. So, uh, and, and also they are endocytosis by the cells similarly, like how the normal EVs are endocytosis. So there is no difference. So then we went ahead using our in vitro system OGD model. We evaluated uh, how superior are these uh, MIR424 overexpressing EVs. We call them FE functionally engineered EVs, EV424, FE424. Um, our data uh, shows that FE424 is superior in ways it, uh, it significantly increased the neuroprotective effect by decreasing the cell death more than that of normal EVs and increased, uh, there is a, uh, then here this is ROS measurement and um, MIR424 overexpressing EVs significantly reduced ROS production or oxidative stress in cells after OGD. This is a, um, uh, this study is done in microglia. So uh, when we, use these uh, EVs in microglia subjected to um, cy cytokine-induced injury, 
um, and we measured nitric oxide, ROS, and LDH, we found that these EVs has, have remarkable uh, efficiency in reducing the effect or protecting from um, nitrate production or ROS production and, and uh, decreasing cell death. And finally, we injected these functionally engineered EVs along with the normal EVs and, uh, uh, and, and the hypoxic EVs. And we found that the uh, there is a significant functional recovery in the eye, ischemic eye, after the injection of these EVs. And there is not much difference between the hypoxic EVs and the MIR-424 overexpressing EVs. And we know that hypoxic EVs contain MIR-424 or uh, MIR-424. So from the studies, uh, we came to a conclusion that hypoxic preconditioning enhanced neuroprotection via differential expression of functionally relevant MIRs. And MSC EVs can be engineered to package MIRs of interest, which is a very big advancement. So based on this, we can now, uh, if we know different MIRs of our interest, which is relevant to, um, the, to protect um, other disease, disease progression, we can package it into, the, into, into these EVs. And we have a system in place. And then MIR-424 overexpressing EVs are functionally superior and they're translationally very relevant. And these, these engineered EVs can be now used in uh, our different models of glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy, or we also have another a parallel study going on optic neuritis associated with multiple sclerosis. And that was the end of my talk. And I acknowledge my gratitude um, I, I thank uh, Dr. Stephen Roth, who is my mentor, and uh, I'm in his lab. Uh, he's very supportive. And then Dr. Sriram Ravindran, he uh, is our collaborator. Uh, we do a lot of bioengineering work, the functional uh, engineering uh, for different aspects, not just uh, modifying for the uh, functionality, but uh, how to modify these uh, EVs to specifically target uh, to a specific cell types in the retina. These are our studies ongoing in the, in the lab. And also the lab members, uh, Leanne and Loria, help with imaging and a lot of uh, in vitro work. And our students, uh, they're very hardworking students and the people from uh, Ravindran lab and our collaborators from different departments and universities. And um, the ophthalmology core at UIC helps with all those imaging studies. And uh, Finally, I thank um, Bright Focus Foundation, um, which fund me for my research, and National Multiple Sclerosis Society, and our lab is funded by NIH and other um, funding sources. And thank you so much for giving me the chance to present my work here. And if you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to ask, and I will try to answer that. Thank you.